Hello, everybody. I am Indy McDaniel, and welcome back to Critical Point. And when we left off, we finally did the nasty with Rico. And that took forever. God. Friggin' virgins. Always taking so long with the sex. Um, and anyway, now we are just waking up from that. And uh, I don't know if there's going to be any real new content. Um, we've got two more choices to make until we get to the to the ending uh, that we're going after. Um, it might all be the same, so this might be a particularly short episode, and I feel like I might just want to go through this, um, even though it's the same material, just to have enough content to get to the end uh, to justify a full episode. So, with that said, let's go! I woke up to the alarm from the terminal. I stretched, then took a hot shower and shaved. I turned to the terminal to order breakfast. I called up the meal function and the basic menu was displayed. Exactly the same as yesterday. Well, that that's not very interesting, is it? I seem to have developed a pattern already. Should I call Rico? That might just wind up in a continuation of yesterday. See, slightly different content. No, it's still morning. I shouldn't have to worry about that happening. After all, she has computer-like reasoning. Sleeping together is done at night. Clearly. Therefore, I decided to call Rico for breakfast. Just uh, as I reached towards the monitor, it announced an incoming message. Carla appeared on the monitor. Good morning to you. She couldn't be calling this early in the morning to invite me to her bed, could she? God, everybody wants my dick! I've seen it, it's fairly disgusting, what's wrong with you women? I looked at Carla's visage in the monitor a bit apprehensively. Good morning, Colonel Benedict. A strict schedule of sex? Yes I am. Just like a good commander, she showed no signs of yesterday's activities, air quotes. Colonel, did you call me just to check up on my schedule? I was sure that others needed more advice on scheduling than I did. If anyone needs some advice, it would be that Monica girl. After all, she's a reporter. Yes, what about Monica? What about Monica? Okay. So you're sending that loudmouth back to Earth? So that's what this is about. I was going to wait and see what happened, but I didn't need to worry about it anymore. Did she accept it easily? It must have been rough. How did you convince her to leave? Yeah, we've already seen this, and uh, I think the I think the shuttle's gonna probably explode. So actually, we might skip ahead here. Okay, I think this is slightly different. I used the terminal to call Rico. Rico appeared on the monitor. We made the normal morning pleasantries. I gave her my request without referring to the previous night. I'd like you to make me breakfast. Is that alright? Wow, she's really excited to make me breakfast. I wonder if she thinks breakfast means sex. After she responded brightly, she fumbled to cut the transmission. There was a resounding thump out in the corridor just a few seconds later. I opened the door to see Rico flashing her panties at me, as usual. Although they were the same panties as always, I felt differently about them than I had previously, because now I knew what was underneath them. I had entered the realm behind those panties last night. Make it sound magical, why don't you? Jesus. Her virgin hole had been really nice and tight. Oh no, I was starting to get an erection. I'd better stop thinking this way so early in the morning. Still, how did she get here so quickly? That's odd. I took Rico's hand and pulled her to her feet. Yes, yes you are. Yes, yeah, sorry about this, but could you order breakfast for me? All right, I will. She trotted up to the terminal inside my room as she replied. She took my order just like a waitress. Hmm, let's see, it's morning. 
I'd like white rice, miso soup with tofu, baked fish, and hot springs, boiled eggs. Yeah, I suppose so. I just rattled that stuff off off the top of my head, so I don't know, really. I told you I was just an average Japanese guy with a terrible accent that sounds like you might be from England, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, really, who knows? I'm like the Geico, Geico Gecko, really. You don't know where I'm from, but apparently I'm an average Japanese guy, so that's cool. Didn't I? Ew, seaweed! Can you do that? She seemed to be breathing heavily. Maybe because of last night's activities, air quotes? Rico, you haven't had breakfast yet, have you? Why don't you order something for yourself, too? Sure, why wouldn't it be? I don't want you to starve, girl! I don't think there's any rule forbidding it. I mean, if there's no rule forbidding what we did last night... <laughs> How is there a rule for us eating breakfast together, really? I mean, that would just be stupid. Oh, there is a rule? We can't do it? Okay, Rico, go back to your room after you order me your breakfast and order your own damn breakfast! <laughs> I would break into song from um, The Beauty and the Beast, but I'm pretty sure I'd get tagged for copyright and FUCK YOU, DISNEY! Rico started to tap away at the keyboard as her eyes sparkled brightly. In a moment, two trays with, var with a variety of packs on them slid out of the chute. There was even a bottle of soy sauce. We'd need that for the nori seaweed. Obviously, I mean, who doesn't know that? You morons. It looked like a regular bottle of seasoning, but it was made out of ba ballistic glass. Rico took the trays to the table. I opened the packs. The fish was a little too perfect, but everything else was just like the real thing. Well, how do you make fish too perfect, and how is that a bad thing? The hell is wrong with you, me? Just enjoy the damn meal! The tofu was in perfect cubes, maybe just a bit too perfect. There you go again with the too perfect! I don't think it actually is a real thing! The hot springs steamed egg was half cooked, just like the real thing, and the rice was oh so fluffy! Man, this is... she is good! I started off with the miso soup. But as soon as I'd sipped some into my mouth... <laughs> what? What? No! Pwah! 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 I say pwah! I say pwah to your newlyweds comment! Pwah! Pwah! I spat out the soup in shock surprise. Pwah! Just eat your breakfast and don't say things like that. That's right. I reached for the nori seaweed and then. No, no, I'm gonna stop doing that right now. Honey, what? Cut that out. No, I'm done. Hmm. Did she want to transfer to my department and work under me in order to become my wife? Four. Maybe I'd better think twice before eating together from now on. This is bad for my heart. Just after we'd finished our hot springs in breakfast, I heard an explosion and felt a shudder through the ground. It sounded like four. What the heck? It wasn't an air attack. An explosion in a vacuum wouldn't produce sound waves, and I wouldn't feel the vibrations either. If it was big enough in a vacuum to be, to be felt here, this room would be reduced to rubble. Therefore, it must be from within the base. And close, too. Was it from an attack? But I couldn't imagine that could happen now. All base functions had been restored. As long as the base functions were operating, there couldn't be an attack without some type of warning. I called up the terminal. Computer, report on the sound of an explosion. The explosion sounded like FWAAA! And the accompanying vibrations, which didn't sound anything like FWAAA! But, you know, whatever. B1, B2, Spaceport area において accident. An accident? Or was it sabotage? Rico, you clean up here. I hurried to the door. 
I'm going out! Leave me alone, woman! To the spaceport! I told you to clean up here! Yes, sir! Be a good wife and do as I- I mean, no, you're not my wife! Shut up, Rico! I left Rico behind as I raced out of the room. I could find the spaceport on my own without a guide! I didn't need any stinking guide! I think. Well, I might need a stinking guide. Rico, are you finished cleaning in there? I need your help. Maybe I should have brought Rico. No, I can't trust anyone right now. Not even the virgin I just deflowered. I have to go by myself. I hurried down the corridor. Hello, edited nipples. I'm going to check the time real quick. Oh no, we're only at 11 minutes, we got plenty of time. <clears throat> Fortunately, I found the spaceport ready room without getting lost. A few commandos had already arrived, tits on full display. Oh, I see you there in the middle hiding behind the arm there. Ah, oh, you thought I'd missed you, didn't you? No, you're all edited now, don't even worry about it. I saw that Corporal Trepo was among them. I listened to the conversation. <coughs> we'll have to get the space suits, Trepo said. We can take down the wall for this block, but what about air loss, Commando A said. Which one's Commando A, huh? Is it, is it purple? Is it green? Or is it, um, what is that? Auburn? Um, tan? I, I don't know what color your hair is. It's stupid, frankly. Or is it pink? No, I think pink's Trepo, right? <coughs> How about going around from the outside, Commando B suggested. Which one is B, then? From this side of the door, it looked like nothing had happened. If nobody went inside, there'd be no way to determine what had happened. I began to operate the mechanism to open the door. <laughs> oh, Captain Sir, don't open that! Why not? It's just a door. I've opened doors hundreds of times in my life. Nothing bad's ever happened. In fact, most of the time, good things happen when I open doors. It's naked people standing behind them. Sometimes they want to have sex. Other times they just want me to watch. Either way, I have a good time. So I'm opening this door and there's nothing you can do about it, Trepo. Trepo called out suddenly for me to desist. What's the matter? We can't tell what happened from out here. <laughs> Beyond the door is a vacuum. Without proper preparation and equipment, we'd all be sucked out when the door is opened, Trepo said. Oh, that explains the discussion I was listening to just a minute ago. Wow, I'm a moron, huh? What? I asked. I couldn't believe believe what she was saying, so I just opened the door anyway to prove her wrong. We were all sucked out and killed terribly. What the hell happened? And how do they know this? Just as I was about to ask my questions, Trepo continued speaking. That's what the witness told us, Trepo said. Witness? I asked. I looked towards where Trepo was pointing and saw Elise sitting in the shadows behind the commandos. I hadn't noticed her there earlier. Her clothes looked like they'd been shredded and she'd suffered burns. It looked like something really bad had happened. I walked over to her. Elise, what happened? Oh, sorry. You saw it? I asked. Then Elise whispered something in my ear that so that nobody else could overhear me. Or her, rather. We're speaking now, aren't we? Huh? Oh, oh alright. I knew she must have something important to report to me. I turned to Corporal Trepo. Corporal Trepo, I said. As I called her over to where we were, I came up with a reason to leave the area. I'll explain that I needed to take Elise to sickbay. I told the corporal my excuse. Lieutenant Triad looks pretty bad. I'll accompany her to sickbay. You take care of things here, I told her. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Leave it to me, Trepo said. She puffed out her chest as she saluted me. Well, I appreciate the show, Trepo, but there's no time for that now. You've got business to attend to. I've got an android to have sex with. So, uh, you know, fuck off. I offered my shoulder to Elise for her to lean on and led her away from the area. We walked like that until we were out of sight of the commandos. Then Elise withdrew her arm from around my shoulder. I thought you were putting on an act. Tat is correct. Is that how you really spell that word, Elise? I thought you were a highly advanced android. Shouldn't you have spell check in your systems? She was as cool as ever. Then keep up the act. We might run into someone else. At least put her arm back around my shoulder and acted like she was injured. Well, where should we go? Rico might be in my room. We'd better go to sickbay so that nobody gets suspicious. But I didn't think that there was any medicine there that would work on Elise. She smiled slightly. We played injured person and helper all the way to sickbay. Elise and I arrived at sickbay. Okay, I think... Quick check of... Quick check at a time. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's a good place. And I think we might be headed back into familiar territory here, so I'm gonna cut it here and pick things up. Wow, I thought we were really close to the to this ending. I, I was apparently wrong. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. I am Indy McDaniel. Until the next one, see us.